See, the gospel isn't something we hear once and move on from. The gospel needs to be our meditation. It needs to be our delight through our entire lives. From the day we believe the gospel to the day we die, the gospel is to be our joy, to be our meditation. We need to be warned here. If you want a message to dwell in you richly, it's got to be a rich message. Right? You can't fill yourself with some shallow, trite, and silly message and expect that that will dwell within you richly. You can't eat a diet composed entirely of potato, potato chips and Twinkies and expect that you'll have a healthy body, right? You can't dwell upon some cheap gospel and expect that you'll have a healthy soul. We need to dwell upon a rich gospel. We need to dwell richly upon the richest gospel. We've got to be careful because those silly, shallow gospels are all around us. We're bombarded with them every time we turn on the television, every time we listen to radio, every time we visit a Christian bookstore. There are those gospels there too, competing with the true gospel. We need to be clear that so much of what passes for the gospel in Christian churches will not dwell in you richly. The gospel of the prosperity movement cannot dwell in you richly. The gospel of Joel Osteen cannot dwell in you richly. It can't because it's not a rich message. A gospel like that can only dwell in you in a fleeting, superficial, shallow way. I don't mean to pick on an easy target here, but, but Joel Osteen, in his own way, he, he summarizes this entire kind of Christianity, an entire brand of Christianity, a movement that's just exponentially bigger than all of the conservative and reformed churches put together. It's huge. In one of his books that sold millions and millions of copies, he offers this. Start calling yourself healed, happy, whole, blessed, and prosperous. Stop talking to God about how big your mountains are and start talking to your mountains about how big your God is. You tell that to a man who is consumed by sin. You preach that message to a man who is just wallowing in these deep-rooted habits of sin and addiction. He's tried programs. He's tried counseling. He's tried cold turkey, he's tried it all, and he's just slipping deeper and deeper into this pattern of sin, into this habit of sin. It's wrecking his family, it's wrecking his life. Does this man need to start declaring that? Is the gospel he needs that he's actually healed and happy and whole and prosperous? No way. This man needs to cry out in his weakness. He needs to turn to a savior. He doesn't need empowerment. He needs salvation. He needs grace. He needs Jesus Christ. In the same book, he says, don't just accept whatever comes your way in life. You were born to win. You were born for greatness. You were created to be a champion in life. If the gospel is true, it applies equally to everybody. So you take that gospel and you preach it to a Christian in North Korea who's sitting in a cell waiting for the executioner simply because he's a Christian, simply because he dared to speak the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there's usually a grain of truth in these false gospels, these shallow gospels, but that grain of truth is only enough to make them even more dangerous. That message is not the rich message of the gospel. It's just a shallow, fake gospel of the prosperity movement combined with a shallow, fake gospel of personal empowerment. There's no depth. It isn't powerful. It isn't rich. A gospel like that cannot sustain us through dark moments. If you want the gospel to dwell in you richly, you need a rich gospel. That Christian brother who is suffering for his faith that, that Christian sister who's waiting for the executioner, they benefit nothing if we go and we say, you were born to be a champion. They don't need to know you were born for greatness. They need to be assured in that moment they are justified by grace through faith. That when that bullet ends their life, they will not have to face the wrath of God. That person needs to declare not that he's whole and healed, not that he's great and a champion, 
He needs to declare to himself. He needs to declare to anyone who will listen that he's put his faith in Jesus Christ, that Christ has died for his sin, that this pain he's enduring now is just a light and momentary affliction while he waits an eternity of glory. He needs to know that while he was a sinner, Christ died for him. Really what he needs to know is that Jesus Christ is the champion. He's the champion who faced death so that this man could have life in Christ's name. Now that is a rich message. That's a message worth pondering. That's a message worth meditating on. It brings rich contemplation. That message holds riches that will never, ever end. I'm telling you, you can ponder that message from today till the day you die. No matter how many years you have left, you won't ever get to the end of it. It just goes deeper and deeper and wider forever and ever. There's nothing richer, nothing truer, better, sweeter, more satisfying than that gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul has said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the gospel of Jesus Christ dwell in you richly.